Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend. I did, minus the uh, little bit of a sunburn that I got at the lake yesterday. Whew. Anyway, uh, we're here a little early this morning. I've got to uh, got to watch my daughter here in a little bit. Oh, my, my wife has some stuff going on. But I've got one load of V5 corn fungicide to spray. So we're going to try and get that done here early. We've had some trouble with our sprayer not wanting to start it. Let's see if it starts. Oh, we're good. Excellent. Dad had moved the sprayer around yesterday and he had to jump start it or uh, put the charger on it. So, must have got the battery charged enough. But I have a feeling we have new batteries in our future. So, we're going to load up. Like I said, we just got one load. It's an 80 acre load. We need 1200 gallons of water. This one's an easy load. All we need is the water in our um, jug and a half of uh, A frame, the generic, generic quadris. And that's all we're putting in the tank. We've got no sugar, we've got no foliar additives or anything in this load. We are going to spray the plot this morning and then we got one other 60 acre field that I feel like is good enough to justify spraying V5 fungicide on. The rest of the late corn I'm not going to do. So you can see our anhydrous burn starting to show up. Those brown spots, that's where I turned and it was bleeding off really bad. Yeah, that's a bummer. Oh well. So we are spraying the corn plot here, and one thing that I like to do in this field that I don't do anywhere else is spray it across the rows. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, this field is much longer this way than it is this way, and so it just is a lot easier to spray. Uh, two, we don't have tire tracks affecting the plot, right? So uh, because our sprayer is 120 foot wide, our plot entries are 20 feet wide. That means we're covering a lot of entries in one sprayer pass. Two of them would end up with tire tracks, a you know a sprayer tire in them, and that would potentially cause some additional compaction and throw off our our yields and make it not fair. And so by going across the rows, yeah, we run over a little corn, but every variety, every entry in the uh, plot gets run over about the same. Look at our wheat, definitely starting to change. Harvest is coming soon. Yeah, losing its green quickly. Corn looks good right here. There are places, there are places that look really, really good and then there's places that don't look so good. So, Unfortunately, we have zero rain really in the forecast, maybe a little bit next weekend. It's gonna be hot and dry all week and things are gonna keep going downhill. Not much we can do about it. We are just about done here. Got most of this field, except for we're not gonna quite get all the little point here. That's okay. We're gonna run out before we get to the end. Nope. Well, I had to go home for a little bit because I had to watch uh, Morelli while my wife had some appointments this morning. So back around the farm, been doing some odds and ends. And now it's lunchtime. And I got somebody here that wants to take me to lunch and sell me stuff. We'll go learn. All right, we're back. Potential here, something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where we're, where we're at with that one. But uh, they're doing some really cool stuff. Um, opportunities with the seed dealership to partner with them and do some things that uh, I need to call my some of my more progressive customers see if it's something they might be interested or not I don't know it's kind of cool we'll talk about it more some other time all right so anhydrous bar and getting that cleaned up and rebuilt and put away is on the agenda for the week when we get time and I haven't got my parts yet I expect them maybe tomorrow probably Wednesday we need to go look at some fields. Prepare 
particularly some bean fields that are along the river that we might have to irrigate. Let's go look. Alright, so this is one of my fields of concern, let's call it. Uh, these beans have been planted for a long time. They took a very long time to come up out of the ground. And the stand is here. They're not terrible. But they're growing very slowly. It's quite dry. Yes, I'm driving across the roads in the field. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's so dry and uh, hot right now that they're sort of floppy anyway. Anything I'm driving over, is it'll grow back. It's not going to hurt it. I could set up some irrigation pipe and pump water on these beans. Oh, I don't want to do it because it's a lot of work and I don't know if it would help. But we're to the point where it is so dry right now. These beans are just not doing anything. They're not growing. And it would be really nice to kind of kickstart them. We are V3 soybeans working on that fourth trifoliate. Like these leaves are very small. They don't have a lot of size to them. They're kind of pale yellow. They're, the leaves on soybeans kind of flip over in the uh, heat of the day just to try and protect the top from the sun and the because they're stressed, they're under dry conditions. Uh, you can see our cotyledons are totally burnt up. They're about gone. That's not what we want to see. Um, and if we put an inch of rain on here, you'd give them a little kick, you'd jump start them a little bit, and they would look a lot better. That's sort of hard to do, but we can do it. I brought my little shovel. Let's see if we can dig a hole here. Oh, not really. Oh man, it's hard. Is that considered moist ground there? I suppose that's some moisture. Not much. Should have brought a real shovel. Instead of a Oh man, I'm gonna break it. Very dry. Yeah, it looks moist, but it's it, it's it's very dry. set our pump before. Oh, there goes the big blue heron. It's crapped all over the water. We scared the crap out of it, literally. Oh, and there's a groundhog, woodchuck. Well, yeah. Water. We have water source. We can stick a pipe down in there and pump water. So it involves laying pipe up to the end of this grass stretch can't see my phone but right in, in there and then turning and going out across the field so it it involves some setup but it can be done yeah right here's our old uh, trench that we dug out to get our pipe down into the water we would need to do some digging again with the backhoe clear that off and so we can get the pipe down into the water but there's plenty there it would work that tree is a uh, ice storm casualty, it appears, growing in the river. Not what we want to see. We would need to get back here with a mower, which needs to get done anyway, to take care of these trees before they get so big we can't mow them off. Um, and we could do it. Now the problem is, Dad wants to set the stuff up here, make one pass over the field, and pick it all up and go somewhere else. It just doubles the workload. Neighbors outside dressing corn today. All right, so we're going up to our normal irrigated bean, our uh, field across the river over here. We do have a nice field of beans here. These ones look pretty good, but they were the very first beans we planted. Those were planted on April 13th, and they are not very big. 
from being in the ground for over two months. Oh, yeah. So, let's get across the river here. And we'll take a look at our beans up back here. This is where we irrigated corn last year, where we would normally irrigate. And uh, Dad wants to do that last field that we were in and then move everything up here and leave it here for the summer. Which is probably the right thing to do. The thing is, we bought that irrigation gun for when we have dry years. And we have a dry year. Like, now is the logical time to use it. So maybe we should use it. But there's several factors working against us in that sense that, um, one, it's beans. We can't irrigate any corn. If I could irrigate corn, we would have been doing it three weeks ago. I don't have anywhere to do that this year. Um, two, well, it, so why that matters that it's beans. Typically, you can't help beans in June. It doesn't matter if they get tall or not, and all you're gonna do making beans, watering beans is June is make them taller. Maybe true, maybe not. We had a lot of rain last year in, in uh, well, I guess not so much in June, early June, but we had really good beans. So I'm not, I, I think they still need some water. Uh, but beyond that, the crop insurance, like number point number two, that's where we're at, number two. The crop insurance really dictates to us that you shouldn't water beans. If you're going to have an insurance claim, there's no point in spending the money or time or effort irrigating any of it, even if it was corn. Because they're not going to be any good anyway, or at least the ones that you don't water are going to be so bad that it's going to negate any benefit that you get from watering these beans. And I hate it. That's why I hate crop insurance. Because it makes people lazy, crappy farmers. And it uh, doesn't make financial sense for us to save one field of beans or two fields of beans when the rest of them are going to be really bad. The question is... Are the rest of them going to be really bad, or do we not know that yet? And we really don't know that yet. We, you know, we, if it starts raining in July and August, we could have really good beans. Our corn's hurt, but our beans still have a lot of potential. If I water them now, can I have 80 bushel beans here? Yeah, if it rains this summer. If I don't water them now, can we have 30 bushel beans here? Yeah, if it doesn't rain this summer. I have no idea. So the question is, do we still put the time, effort, and dollars into saving this crop when we don't really know what we're going to get? But right now, things don't look good. I don't have the answer to that. We'll get out and look here for a little bit. So we are sitting right here in the center path in this field. There's beans through it, but this would have been where the center pipe was in our irrigation reel last year in the corn. That's why there's no residue right here. See, it starts right there, blank, and then it starts over there. This would have been the center of the field where we were driving all the time so um you can see these are our 30 inch row beans they look good they're starting to fill out the rows i wish they were canopied a lot more had we gotten rain these would be close to canopying already we're uh what's today june 19th like, i want these beans to be flowering and they're not i don't think i don't know let's look are we to r1 yet got any flowers i see buds see any open flowers we might if we looked hard enough okay so like look at this plant here we've got uh our unifoliate leaves can you guys see i can't see my phone very good dusty i don't know what you guys can see anyway uh we've got our two unifoliate leaves right here we've got trifoliate one two three four that makes these v4 if you look right there, that's a flower, I think, or a, oh, maybe that's a trifoliate coming out. But there are some buds. That's another trifoliate. There's going to be flowers right there. There's a flower starting. So they just haven't quite opened up in a couple of days. My goal, oh, look at that one. Is that white? No. My goal is always to have open flowers by June 21st. It's the summer solstice, longest day of the year. We want to capture as much sunlight as possible. It is important for our beans to be bigger 
by the 21st of June. Well, we didn't make it this year. The 30 inch rows are probably gonna hurt us, to be perfectly honest. That, this was probably the wrong year to do it. And I have said that before, that dry years in 30 inch row beans don't work because at one point, whether there still is now or not, there was moisture right here that the beans, if there was a row here, would have gotten. These beans don't have roots to the center of this row. They can't get that moisture. And so it just sits there until it evaporates and the soil dries out, not being utilized. Where when you spread the bean plants out, put 15 inch rows, you can utilize some of that moisture. So, yeah, there's a little bit there. Not a lot. How much can the plants get out of there? I don't know. I don't know. But I know there's not enough there. So, the debate continues. Do we irrigate? Do we set up pipe, spend four or five days in the other field, move pipe here at the end of the week, and then start making the pass across here next week? There is a 40% chance of rain on Friday. That's it right now. That's our forecast. That's the only day. So, and it's been changing and getting less and less all the time. I don't know. If we get some rain, is it going to be enough? Not likely. Now, when we get to the end of July and August, we can't put enough water on here. So if we set the pipe up and we've already got it here, yeah, we'll water the heck out of these beans. Why not, right? One other thing to note, uh, we will do very little damage as far as running over crop, irrigating these beans. You'll notice that I don't have open lanes like we did with corn. So these two rows right here would not have been there when this was a corn field last year, no residue. And that's where we would have pulled the irrigation gun out. Uh, actually, it was probably these four rows, not just two. And um, uh, with the beans, we can go right over the top of them. Even in August, we can go over the top of the beans, so we don't need those lanes. These 30 inch rows make it even easier. You got a tire, a tire with a hose dragging in the middle, it's not a problem. We don't do a ton of damage. We're going to run over a bunch in our center lane where the reel sets, our pipe sits, we might have to mow them down. But for the most part, we don't do much damage to the beans. We're helping them a lot more just by putting the water on than obviously we do with the corn too, but you know what I'm saying. We've got a nice new road up here, but boy, they sure... Um, graded our driveway off, put a stake right in the middle of it. This road is closed, but we're going on it anyway. I think they're still working on a bridge a mile or two down there, so they're keeping the road closed, even though it's done. It's nice. Driving by one of our cornfields here. It's starting to hurt. It's starting to noticeably curl up and be in worse shape than uh, what we've seen. That's gonna get really bad this week. So corn, just like the beans, kind of flop their leaves over. Corn rolls its leaves up like this. It's a self-defense mechanism to protect itself. It's not horrible right here on this edge. It's much worse when you get out in there. Any compacted areas, shallow root systems, smaller root systems, it's gonna be worse. Um, I've said this before, but Good weather covers up a lot of your early mistakes or things that weren't perfect when you planted or earlier. And um, we have not gotten that weather this year. So anywhere that we've worked the ground a touch too wet, planted it a little bit too wet, and I have that, don't let 5% of the field hold it up on another 95% that's good theory, right? And I, I still believe that, but that 5% that was still too wet is showing up big time now. That's what happens when it doesn't rain. Okay. Here's what I have decided. I have not decided anything other than we're going to go up there and mow because those trees are getting out of hand anyway, so it needs to be done. So we need to get it mowed, and then if we decide we want to irrigate, it'll be ready to go. And Dad and Phil and I are going to have to have a discussion to figure that out. Here's the problem. Come on. 
Here's the problem. Our big John Deere mower, that 15 footer that I would love to use, it's down to Berkey. Yeah. We took it down there when we took the tractor down. We have not brought it back yet. That makes it hard to use. We have a little eight foot three point mower that's perfect for behind the 40 point. So I'm gonna use that. It's gonna take me a little longer, but there's not that much there, it'll be fine. I've got the box scraper hooked up though. I had the box scraper hooked up, well, Phil hooked it up to do some driveways, and I've been using it to level out the dirt around my concrete down to my house, which I need to go and do some of. So before I unhook this, we're going to go down there and level a little dirt out, take me 10 minutes, come back, unhook this, find the three-point mower, hook it up, make sure it's good, and go do some mowing. Well, I was trying to do a little crazy. I still need more dirt in there, I think, but we're at least getting it leveled off pretty reasonably well. Picked up a rider, we unhooked our scraper, and now we're looking for our mower. There it is. We might need the uh, quick one for a three point. Yeah, I think the quick hitch will make this much easier, so we're what just going to put that up. What is that weed? I don't know what kind of weed that is. The big one. It's in our way. Quick hitch, so now we can just go grab that thing and lift it up. Much easier. Trick test, like I said. Didn't even have to get off the cab, off the tractor. Cab, not even a tractor, cab on this track. Okay, now all we gotta do is get down and hook up our PTO shaft. And we should probably check the oil in the gearbox. Other than that, she, she good to go. All right, well, we got that area back there where the pump and stuff will go pretty well cleaned up. I'm just making another couple passes along the side here. Uh, when we have irrigated here before, we came out from over there, ran our pipe along here and along this edge, kind of curved around until we got out past, there's an open ditch in here where those trees are that kind of dog legs there. And we went out and then across the center of the field. I am uh, hoping to avoid having to come along the ditch. And since we're only gonna leave the pipe here for a week, we might as well just shoot it right across the bean field. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Make it a little bit more of a straight shot. So that's what that's what we're doing. And we're getting thumbnail pictures right now. I am pretty sure this weed here with this uh, white flowers on it is hogweed. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. We're gonna stay away from that. Do not touch it. That's the stuff that will give you blisters and sores on your uh, arms like you wouldn't believe or your skin. Okay, we got the edges cleaned up around the field where we might be driving in that area back there. We're going to head back up towards the road, maybe do a little more along the roadside and then back to the car. How we doing? Pretty good. really good corn. It's really starting to show stress too. 
Not good. It is not good. It's going to get worse this week. Not good. All right. That's all we needed to do. One little path all the way around. Um, we're done with this, at least for now. Potentially for the year. That's all we'll use it for. So I'm going to go unhook it because we're going to need this tractor to pull a traveler. Probably tomorrow. It is always a fun day when we get to get to 4020 out for a day. It's enough. I'm thankful that I don't have to use that for my everyday farming duties. You, boss fuel trailer, get ready. It's time to go to work. Well, it's time for me to go home. Tomorrow, we start irrigating. Well, at least lay the pipe. Yeah, we'll probably start tomorrow. Oh, I'm not, I don't want to do this, but it is the right thing to do, I think. I don't, I really don't know. I, it's what we're going to do, I do know that. So, uh, in the morning we're going to drag the pump out, we're going to get the reel out, we're going to get the generator out. I don't know if we need to change oil in the generator, I don't know where we're at with any of that kind of stuff. Um, so we're going to mess with all of that. Dad might try and get a load or two of bean sprayed. Um, we're just, it's time to start spraying uh, post-emerge soybean herbicide pass. Basically just Roundup. Uh, although the weeds are not growing either. So we're kind of debating how useful and necessary this pass is right now. There are a couple of fields that we know we need to do. He's going to start there and then we'll kind of go from there. But uh, yeah, that's tomorrow's agenda. And then he's going to take the backhoe up, dip out our river uh, so we can get the pipe in. We'll get the pipe laid and we'll get the traveler up there and... It shouldn't be that. I don't want to say it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. It's just a lot of work. So it is what it is. We'll get it going with it. Have a great night, everybody. We will see you again in the morning. Some of you guys just watch my videos for these irrigation stuff. So you're welcome. Dad is uh, cleaning the sprayer out over there in the corn which it doesn't really need cleaned out from what we were doing to what he's gonna do but it does bring up an interesting point because he's got the nozzles he's watering the sweet corn that's what he's doing <laughs> look at him all right we're gonna zoom in there he's only got part of the boom on uh, half and he's trying to put the water out so we were doing some math the other day oh that's hilarious <laughs> All right, so I get this comment a lot. Why don't you use the sprayer to go and water your crops, right? Here is why. That sprayer holds 1,200 gallons, and Dad's actually doing it, so this is why we not a good example of why we don't do it, but the sprayer holds 1,200 gallons of water. In order for us to put an inch of rain on our fields with that sprayer at 120 foot booms, you could travel exactly 16 feet, 16 feet before you had to empty the sprayer and reload. So you would never be able to put in, even if you only put a half inch on, you went 32 feet, whoop de doo right? It's gonna take forever. You can't get enough volume on with the sprayer to matter. It does not help. It's, it is what it is. Sorry, I'm all shaky, but we're zoomed way in. He's driving as slow as possible trying to. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's why we don't we don't we don't try and water our crops with our sprayer. There's uh, tw I want to say twenty seven thousand one hundred and fifty two gallons per acre inch of water. So in an inch of rain per acre, you can't make that up with a sprayer and a tank. He's gone way too far. He's he's made it way more than thirty two feet. Oh, he's got yeah half the boom. That'd be 30, 32 feet. He's only putting maybe a tenth of an inch on. It's not doing any good, Dad. It's not doing any... It's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do you think it made a difference? I don't know. He did get that one nozzle right on the row, and then one right in the center. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, whatever. Tenth of an inch, maybe. No, probably not even that much. Half a tenth. 